All right, hi guys. Uh, I just want to quickly show you how we can calculate for the uh, the values of P and the value of Q if these forces are in equilibrium. So the statement, let me just read the statement again. Uh, very key things that you should look out for when you read this question, always look out for the for the, the ways that they are using, very careful, read them carefully. Those questions have uh, a clue in it. So this question says, the three forces shown in this figure, so we have three forces, P is a force, Q is a force, and 560 is a force. The three forces in the figure four below are in equilibrium. Equilibrium means balance. Equilibrium means balance. Okay, so this means balance, which means these three forces are balanced. When something is balanced, it's more like uh, we have uh, a seesaw. If we try to balance, more like the way we're balancing those, those beams, this seesaw, whatever force you push this side, whatever force you push this side, it remains balanced. It is not going to uh, weigh too much on the other side or the other side. It is balanced, so there is a balance. In the same manner, this Three, three forces are balanced. That means whether it means going to the horizontally, going to the right or left, these forces are balanced each other. Whether it means going up or down, the forces are still balanced each other. The sum of the forces, when something is balanced, the sum is equal to zero. If we add all these forces up, they should give us zero. Whether going horizontally or going vertically up or down, we should get zero in any of those calculations. So that's the key to that question. So now, the question that we were asked is, calculate the magnitude of the unknown forces. The unknown forces that we have is Q and P. Those are unknown forces, at least we know this force. But what we are going to do is what uh, we always have said that we should do, and that is to align ourselves with this forces which is our we will, we will be aligning them to the force which is zero so to calculate for this value we calculate the sum of the horizontal forces horizontal forces is either going to the right or going to the left and what we said about going to the right or left if it's going to the left to carry a negative it's going to the right to carry a positive so you look at all these three forces and you say all of these three forces, once we add them, they should give us zero. So P, it's a negative force, minus P cos 35, this is going towards the negative. <coughs> P minus, a negative minus for P, this is going to the left. We come to Q, Q also horizontal is going to the left which is a minus force 40. Then this guy, the 560 is a positive, 560. Then everything, when we add all of this, they should give us the zero because they are balanced. Okay, so if we can figure out that, this zero comes in because everything is balanced. These two push to the negative, this push to the negative, but this guy pushes to the positive. But if we add all of this, they give us zero. Okay. So if we can do that, uh, we press, we make sure our calculator is in degree. So we say cos 35. This gives us a negative 0 0.819 p. We press cos 40 gives us a negative 7, 0, 0, 0,766Q plus 560 is equal to 0. <coughs> now, with this calculation, there is nothing we can do. We cannot stop for P, we cannot stop for Q, it is unknown. The only thing we can do is try to simplify it as much as we can. So we'll take uh, this 560, we'll take it to the other side. This remains 819P minus 0 0.766 Q is equal to negative. When it goes to the other side, it becomes a negative. 
You can further simplify it, or you can leave it as it is. You can further simplify it to simplify this side by negative one, and also all of this by negative one. Negative into that, uh, into this negative, it will give us a positive five six t. A negative into that, it will give us a positive seven six six q, which is a positive. A negative into that, it will give us also a positive eight one nine p. Then we can leave it as it is. We cannot solve it because there are two unknown values. So with this calculation, we need what is known as a simultaneous equation. Uh, for this part, this is the equation that we need. Then we go and do another calculation. <clears throat> Remember, this is our first step. The first step that we always did is the other process. Uh, the next step, we calculate for the sum of the vertical forces. Some of the vertical forces is either going up or it's going down. Going up, it will be having a positive. Going down, it will be having a negative. So now we look at these three forces. 560 is not going up. It's not going down. It's a zero for this 560. We are not going to even stress ourselves about the 560 because it is only going to the right. So the force that is going up, P. Now, when we are using uh, vertical, we said we are going to use sine. 35, as long as you use sine, as long as the angle between the force and the horizontal. So this is our force P, the angle is touching the horizontal and it's touching that force. So as well for this guy, we are using sine because the angle of that 40 is between the force itself and the horizontal. So we can use sine and cos when we do the horizontal. All right, so now P is going up which is very important, P is going upward to get a positive value. When we look at Q, Q is going downward, so you get a negative Q sine 40. And then if we add those two values, they should give us zero. Very important. We are equating to zero because in the statement we have been told the forces are in equilibrium. Then the only thing that we can do is now try to simplify instead of working with sine and uh, sine 35 and sine 40, we can try and work with numbers. So sine 35 gives us 0, 0,574. Uh, we round off the, the 5 that comes 35. Uh, we call this P. This is a minus sine 40. We get 0, 0,643. Uh, then Q. Then it goes to 0. Okay, at this point, there's nothing we can do. We can leave it as it is, or we can try and simplify this together with say 0, 0.574 P is equal to 0, 0.643 Q, because this came to the other side, therefore get the positive part. There's nothing we can do, we can leave it as it is. This equation and that equation, uh, individually we cannot solve them, but both of these two equations are coming from the same diagram, so we can use the two equations to solve for the unknown values. Okay, with simultaneous equation, it's either you use your own method, there are different methods for calculating simultaneous, either a elimination method or substitution method, or you can use a graph paper, but the graph paper will not give you the accurate answers, especially with this test mode. So what we just do is use any of them, elimination or substitution, with this one, I'm going to use the substitution. What I'll do is try to make one value, either P, uh, Q or P, to be the subject of the formula. If I take this, this is my weakest formula or weakest equation compared to this. So I'll try and uh, simplify the weakest equation. P is equal to 0, 0,643Q. So I will try to leave P as the subject of the formula, which means I'll divide this side by 0, 0,574 and also divide the other side by 0, 0.574. This will cancel that and it will leave me with P, but then this will need to be calculated. 0, 0.643 divided by 0, 0.574 and it gives us 1,120Q. Okay, so we have, we have at least simplified that equation and it has given us a value for P, but in terms of Q. So we can take where there is P, 
in this equation, wherever there is t, that t, we will replace it with that value, the 1, 1, 2 as the value for p, then it will give us a calculation uh, for the value of q. So I'll take this equation now. We are now, we have now substituted this equation, we are substituting it, this value of p, we are substituting it in that, that's why they call it a substitution method. So it says 0, 0,81, I'm taking this equation, 819, now p, I'll multiply by this value, 1, 120q. Then I continue with my equation. So this will be one product that you have to calculate. Then I add to 0,766q is equal to 560. Okay, so you will notice that in this now, our new equation, there is no p, but it's just q and q. If we multiply those two, 0,819 and 1,120 gives us 0,917q plus 0,766q is equal to 560. Now this is q and that is q. Now they are like terms. We can add these two. 0,917 plus 0,766 gives us 1,6. 683q is equal to 560. <coughs> we divide by 1,683. We divide that side by 1,683. This will cancel that. And now this division 560 divided by 1,683 will give us 332,739. That's the value of q. Since the force that we've been using is neutrons, this guy will also adopt that value, neutrons. So at least you have managed to solve for one value, which is Q, and then we solve for the other values. Now, when we have one value for Q, it is not necessary that you go back to this equation. We already have a simple equation, which gives us P is equal to that. So I'll just take this value now. We have already got our, uh, our Q. So now I go to this, value for p since i'm looking for p this equation will give me p so the p is equal to 1 comma 1 to 0 times now the value of q which we now know which is 3 3 2 comma 7 3 9 and this will give us our value in newton uh, 1 comma 1 to 0 times 3 3 2 comma 7 3 9 will give us 372,668 uh, as supposed to be 76 but we round it off to 3 this one. So those are the two values for P and Q. So we say Q, we know it's 332,739 Newton. Uh, P is now 33,373. 372,668 newtons. And these three forces, this guy is pushing in that direction, this guy is pushing in that direction. These three forces are balanced. You've got your answer, but should you choose to prove yourself, you can try, if you do the vector component, then the value for P, you press it there. Now you'll be proving yourself if you use this equation. You take the value for P, you place it there. Let's try using that uh, sum of vectors. So we say P, now we are going to use the value for P, 372,668 times 35 minus the value for Q, which is 332,739 uh, times 40. This should give us zero. If it does not give us zero or anything close to zero, then our calculation are slightly off. But in this case, it's going, to, it's going to give us something close to that value because uh, we have been rounding off all the way, so it might be close to that. All right, so 372,668 times 35 minus 33. 2,739 times 
Oke. Give me something like negative 0,126. But this is because all the way through our